Legal Tech Innovators. Put your hands together and welcome to the stage the CEO and founder of Clio, Jack Newton. Good morning. It is so amazing to see all of you here. My name is Jack Newton. I'm the founder and CEO of Clio, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to the 11th annual Clio Cloud Conference. Thank you. In the past decade or so that we've been hosting this conference, one thing has become really clear. This is not a conference about Clio. This is a conference about you. It's become something so much bigger than Clio. It's become something that is about reimagining the legal industry and what it can be. ClioCon attracts all kinds of legal professionals who see the future of the legal industry a little bit differently. Those who aren't afraid of change or challenge, but rather those who lean into what's coming and maybe even crave the change that is coming. And with that drive and desire to break out of the mold, to experiment and embrace new ways of practicing, each one of you collectively help us usher in a new standard for what it means to be an innovative legal professional. As ClioCon keeps growing year after year, more and more legal professionals see and hear what ClioCon and all of you are about and want to be part of it. This is the largest ClioCon we've ever had with over 2,500 people in this room today joining us in person in Nashville. There's a bunch of people in this room, and hold up your hand if that's the case, that have been here every single year for ClioCon. It's amazing to see you, welcome back. This is also our second hybrid ClioCon. We have over 2,100 people joining us virtually today from all over the world, making this the biggest and the best ClioCon ever. Thank you for joining us here in Nashville. We know quite a few of you have tra traveled a long distance to get here. We have attendees from over 20 countries, including Chile, Norway, India, and Great Britain. ClioCon has truly become an international event. If you're joining us virtually, please let us know where you're joining from in the chat. It's hard to believe, but Clio itself is celebrating 15 years since we launched way back in 2008. The amount of transformation over the past 15 years has been incredible. If you rewind to 2008, Clio launched in a world filled with Blackberries and on-premise software. And it was in an era where the idea of cloud-based software, of cloud-based law practices, was a radical idea. But we came into that world with a mission of transformation. We imagined a world where the cloud was part of the foundations that every law firm would use to grow their practice. And in so many ways, we've succeeded in bringing that vision of a cloud-powered legal industry to life. The legal industry today, in 2023, is unrecognizable from that of 2008. The cloud is finally considered to be table stakes. Along with the cloud, we launched in 2008 with a vision of creating beautiful, easy to use, but powerful legal practice management software. We struck a nerve and saw early adoption in the industry and have been in hyper growth mode as a company ever since. In 2008, when we launched, Clio was just two employees, myself and my co-founder, Ryan Govro. This year, we've achieved an incredible milestone Clio is now made up of a thousand passionate employees, or Cleons, as we like to call ourselves. Thank you. I'd also like to highlight the incredible leadership team that has, that has joined me and Ryan over the years. Any one of these individuals could work at any company in the world. They're the best people in their craft in the world but they've chosen to work at Clio because our mission, what we're all trying to accomplish together, resonates deeply with them. 
They're all here on the ground, by the way, here to meet and connect with you. So if you see any of these folks along with the rest of Team Clio, please feel free to let them know what you'd like to see in the future of what Clio delivers to you. And that's the case especially for someone that's brand new to our team having joined us just a few months ago, and that's Haymonth Kashyap, our first ever Chief Product Officer. Haymonth joins us with about 20 years of experience in strategy and product development, and we're so excited to have him on the team. Please feel free to pull Haymonth aside and let him know what you'd like to see in the future of Clio. And apologies in advance, Haymonth, you're going to hear from a lot of people over the next two days. Now, Haymonth is not alone. We've got an incredible leadership team, but more importantly, we've got an incredible team of 180 Cleons on the ground here that not only know how to dance, as you saw a few moments ago, but know our software in and out, know how to help you. So please feel free to take advantage of the incredible resource you've got around you today over the next two days with Team Clio. And it's because of Team Clio and you that we're in the incredible position we are today. Clio has grown over the last 15 years to be by far the largest provider of practice management solutions in North America. And I'm proud to say Clio has now been recommended by all 50 US, U.S. state bar associations, making us the only legal practice management system in the world to have achieved this honor. This landmark achievement reinforces our commitment to legal tech innovation and supporting law firms across the nation. We're also so excited to be bringing Clio's technology to the rest of the world. In addition to celebrating 15 years since launching Clio in North America, we're celebrating 10 years since we launched our EMEA office in Dublin, Ireland. We've now grown to over 1,000 law firms in the UK, which is an incredible milestone, led by our incredible EMEA GM, Sarah Murphy. We've also, just earlier this year, launched in Australia. We've seen a hugely successful launch in just the first under year that we've been in Australia, and we've just been so excited to be partnering with the innovative legal technology community of Australia and bringing Clio's technology to consumers in Australia. We're also thrilled to announce that as of two weeks ago, Clio has received its official certification by the Law Society of New South Wales, which involves a rigorous process, and that's putting it lightly, of certifying the software and testing it to make sure it matches the trust accounting rules required in New South Wales. This is one of the most thorough certifications you can receive in the world, and one that we're very proud to have received. We're not just seeing incredible success in the UK and Ireland and Australia, by the way. Clio is now used in over 100 countries in the world. We've got Clio users as far south as Ecuador and Brazil, and as far north as Iceland and Norway. And we've got plenty of customers on the other side of the world in Japan, New Zealand, and Fiji. So it's an exciting year for Clio to celebrate in so many ways, but none of these milestones would have been possible without the support we've had from hundreds of thousands of customers and partners like all of you in this room over the years. And I want to give a deep and sincere thank you to everyone that has helped Clio become the company it is today. Thank you. So let's next talk about Clio's mission. This is what binds Cleons together. It's something we obsess about. It's something we think about in the shower in the morning. It's what makes everyone at Clio tick. When you see that passion about what we're doing, it's this mission that you're seeing reflecting back to you in terms of the spirit and energy our people feel. I also know it's a mission that resonates with so many of you in this room, or some flavor of it. You want to have an impact. You want to expand the impact that legal is having, and you want to make your own dent in the universe. And I think that's what brings us all here today. But transformation is no small thing. We're not talking about incremental change. 
This is about changing things at the most fundamental level possible. And that's where the theme for this year's CleoCon came from. To achieve this kind of impact, we need to find ways to dramatically amplify both our individual impact and our collective impact. Amplifying our impact is not a nice to have anymore. It's a necessity. Amplification is about making a bigger difference, having a greater influence, and achieving more meaningful results. It's turning up the volume on your efforts and taking your contributions to the next level. It's going beyond the routine and exploring innovative strategies that can help you make your mark on the legal industry. And while that's a beautiful sentiment, it can sometimes feel impossible to do. We have ever-growing demands from both our personal and professional lives, and how do we deal with what feels like a tsunami of demands on our time? The key lies in harnessing your time and energy in a manner that enables you to maximize your full potential. But how do you do that? At Clio, we really fundamentally believe the answer to that is technology. Technology is the lever that will help you achieve these outcomes. What technology really gives you is leverage. And that's a word I want you to remember. It's a powerful concept. And I want to explore what it means by more fully exploring this physical metaphor. At one end of the lever lies your time and energy. And on the other lies your output, your impact. And just as a lever can exert tremendous force with a minimal effort, technology can, can empower you to achieve more with less time. It can automate repetitive tasks, streamline processes, and provide access to vast amounts of information and resources. By harnessing technology as your lever, you can enhance your productivity and your efficiency. But moreover, it allows you to amplify your impact. And while we cannot make more time, we can make every moment count. By amplifying your impact, you can achieve exponential outcomes. But as intuitive as the concepts of leverage and amplification might seem, it does require dedication and focus to achieve. And the fact that you're here tells me you are all equally committed to that transformation and innovating in the way that we deliver legal work. Just like our very first customer, Catherine Marino Riesman, who, by the way, is in the audience somewhere here today. Welcome, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you for taking what turned out to be a crazy bet on two guys in 2008, uh, but it, it proved out. She saw the transformational potential the cloud could have way back in 2008, 15 years ago. And while others saw, others saw risk, she saw opportunity to operate differently and more efficiently. To continue to recognize these kinds of customers that are pioneering approaches to legal services, we celebrate the Reisman Awards every year, and these awards are obviously named after Catherine. This year, we have an incredible group of winners. From training their attorneys in trauma-informed lawyering to developing online tools to help expunge criminal records or writing children's books to educate individuals on the impacts of systemic racism, they are truly admirable. This year, oh sorry, I truly believe everyone in this room has the potential to have a similar outsized impact on the world around them. And to help you get started, we've got an incredible resource, a playbook for how you can leverage key performance indicators to get better at running your law firm more efficiently and guide you to the journey, guide you on the journey of taking your law firm to the next level. This year's Legal Trends Report is our eighth Legal Trends Report. And we've been giving you valuable insights on how to better run your law firm ever since we first launched this report in 2016. Producing this report annually allows us to track and compare the legal industry's richest set of longitudinal data. We can see what practices and technologies firms are adopting 
and navigate industry and client trends as well. What we noted this year as we looked back is that this idea of leveraging technology to have an outsized impact is more important than it's ever been in today's climate where we've got ever-growing demands to operate efficiently. But we're seeing something remarkable that we've never seen before. Law firms are stepping up to this challenge and overhauling their operations to meet these demands. Compared to 2016, we've seen a staggering in increase in workforce productivity within the legal industry. The average legal professional earns more than two and a half times more revenue for their firm than they did when we launched the Legal Trends Report in 2016. Now let's unpack some of the stats we're talking about here, and they are truly incredible. On average, legal professionals are working over 25% more cases per year. And they're recording 36% more of their billable hours. That equates to a 70% increase in billed amounts and a 72% increase in collections. Taken together, these KPIs compound into dramatic gains in productivity and revenue growth. We've seen a 155% increase in overall build amounts per timekeeper and a 158% increase in collected amounts per timekeeper. Yeah, this is worth taking a picture of. This does mark a new era of productivity for the legal industry. It's unprecedented and something we've never seen before in our Legal Trends Report data. And I'm going to help unpack what is underlying this dramatic change. Let's zoom in and discuss the incremental gains we're seeing at the firm level. Now, what's key is looking at what we call the lawyer's funnel. This is a framework we can use to discuss the various stages of revenue generation for a law firm. The funnel is comprised of three key performance indicators or KPIs that help a law firm gauge its progress and determine if it's on the right track. At the top of the funnel is the firm's utilization rate. This is the number of hours dedicated to billable work out of your typical workday. This metric basically helps you track how much of your day is translating into billable work. And if it's not billable time, it's not translating to your utilization rate. We're able to look at this in a very data-driven way by looking at the anonymized and aggregated data across all of the performance of Clio's customer base to get an average baseline of what firms are actually delivering in terms of utilization rate. This year, the average lawyer spent 37% or 2.9 hours of their eight-hour day on billable work. From there, we can understand how much of that billable work is realized and billed to the client. We can help identify gaps or inefficiencies in the billing process that might be impacting revenue by looking at this realization rate. Going back to example, we can see how this funnel starts to shrink as we move from utilization rate to realization rate. The average realization rate for firms was 86% this year. This means of the total 2.9 hours of billable work they started with, they're now only invoicing for 2.5 hours. The, real, the reasons for realization rate being smaller could be as far ranged as giving a bit of a discount, writing down some time, deciding that you're not going to bill for a certain line entry on the bill, applying an overall discount, et cetera. Lastly, we have the collection rate, which highlights the effectiveness of a firm's efforts in securing payment for the services rendered. Put simply, if you send a bill to the client, how much of that bill ends up getting paid on average? The average law firm collected 89% of what they invoiced and are now down to 2.2 hours of collected revenue for every workday. So that's what the lawyer tells us, the lawyer funnel tells us. We go from 2.9 hours at the top of the funnel with utilization rate down to 2.5 hours at the collection rate level, or sorry, at the realization rate level, and finally at 2.2 hours at the collection rate level. Now, 
while this might not seem great, we've made a ton of progress over the last eight years. Since 2016, utilization rates have soared by an incredible 32%. So we're seeing really good progress. Realization rates have increased by 12%, and collection rates hit an all-time high of 90% in 2021 and are just off of that this year. I also want to point out, by the way, of all of these statistics, utilization rate and realization rate are tough needles to move, but you're totally in control of them. Collection rate is a shared KPI with your clients. And this is a number that I think, as a North Star, should be 100%. When you send out a bill to your clients, hopefully you're getting paid for that work. And we'll talk about some methods and some strategies for how to drive collection rate up later in this keynote. Now, I also want to talk about the impact of not getting paid. These high-level KPIs are great for assessing what your overall utilization, realization, and collection rate are, but the timing of when you realize your revenue and when you collect your revenue is equally, if not, important. This year, we're really excited to introduce a new KPI to the Legal Trends Report, one we've never discussed in the past, and that's a KPI called Lockup. Those of you in accounting might recognize this term, and it's a, a, a term that is used widely in the accounting industry. And what it's, used to do, what it's used for is assessing cash flow. For law firms, it shows how much revenue expressed in days of work is unbilled and uncollected at any given time. This lockup KPI is comprised of three separate KPIs. Realization lockup, collection lockup, and finally, total lockup. And I'll walk you through what each of these mean. Realization lockup ties to the utilization rate and basically tells us how, many, how much revenue expressed in number of days of worth of revenue is tied up in billing workflows. What is essentially the distance between when you do the work and when that work gets on a bill? When we looked at the data, it was 38 days at the 50th percentile to get bills out the door. What this means is that for 50% of law firms at any given time, they're carrying over five weeks worth of annual revenue that they haven't billed to clients. There's obviously potential to do better there. For comparison, the top 25% of law firms have reduced that time by more than half. They see a realization lockup of 18 days or fewer. So part of what we're going to discuss is how do you move yourself from the median or worse to into the top 25th percentile firms when it comes to performing on lockup. Next, we have collection lockup. And as you might guess, what this measures is the amount of time between when you send a bill to the client and they actually pay you. And again, this is expressed in days. What we found is that the median lockup among law firms is 45 days. Again, this means that 50% of law firms have at least one and a half months of their annual revenue uncollected in their accounts receivable. And looking again at that top 25%, they once again have reduced that time by more than half. They see a collection lockup of 19 days or fewer. And lastly, we have total lockup, and this represents the total impact of realization lockup and collection lockup taken together. The median total lockup among law firms is 97 days at the median. This means half of you have over three months of your annual revenue sitting in either an unbilled or unpaid state. Meanwhile, the top 25% of firms cut that down by almost half. They only experience a lockup, a total lockup of 51 days, which is about seven weeks. And although that median number may seem substantial, there are firms that are tracking much worse. For example, the median total lockup for UK firms, and this is as reported by the Law Society of England and Wales, is 140 days, or almost five months. And just to put this into perspective in concrete terms, 
Here's how lockup can dramatically impact your cash flow and cause a lot of pain. Consider a law firm with $500,000 of annual turnover. If that firm had a 140-day lock, lockup period, they're waiting on $192,000 in unbilled and uncollected work. If that same firm was able to reduce their lockup period to even 97 days, it would provide them with $59,000 more in cash at any given time. This goes to show how important it is to improve your billing and collection workflows, and that effort is really worth its weight in gold. Now, what does cash flow mean? If your cash flow is tight, how does this translate to your day-to-day -day reality? Having poor cash flow limits your ability to pay staff, to grow your practice, to take on pro bono work, to invest in expanding your practice. Being able to reduce those lockup periods can dramatically improve your financial flexibility and as a result, open up a world of opportunity. Now, you might be asking yourself, how do I do this? How do I impact the utilization, collection, and realization rates I was discussing earlier, as well as impact lockup? And we've got a playbook here that is fully described in this year's Legal Trends Report, which you can download as of today, by the way. So you don't need to worry about taking screenshots of this presentation. We deep dive on this in the LTR. But I'm going to give you a high-level overview of some of the tactics you can deploy to dramatically improve these KPIs. And we're able to tell you this story because we've done a large-scale data analysis of what certain firms are doing in Clio to drive these KPI levers. We're able to separate good from great and show you exactly what the best run firms are doing to drive outsized performance in all of these KPIs. So let's walk through what this looks like. A lot of this centers around the concept of streamlining inefficient billing workflows. Many law firms still have a two manual process, a lockstep process that's run every month, when it should be a more continuous and adaptive billing process overall. So here are the tips. Stop sending bills in physical paper mail today. Please, start emailing your bills. You need to meet your clients where they're at, and that's in their email inbox. Nobody is paying attention to their physical mail anymore. We also know snail mail is dangerous in so many ways. There's a higher risk of delayed payment, excuses. I didn't get the mail, the check's in the mail, whatever. You don't want to hear those excuses. Email-based billing offers faster delivery. It encourages timely payment. And again, it's easy for your clients. If you're trying to deliver an effortless experience, they get that bill in their inbox. They want to get it out of the way. They're going to click that online payment link and get it out of the way. Meanwhile, it's really important to stay on top of your clients that are not paying their bills. Your clients can lose track of exactly what they owe you, maybe across multiple bills. And it's up to you to help organize that outstanding balance inf information for them. And you can do this with a really powerful and simple feature in Clio called outstanding balance summaries. You can attach this to every bill, you can remind your clients of what they owe you, and we see a substantial uptick in both realization rate and collection rate when customers are using this feature. By compiling and summarizing what's owed, you're increasing your chances dramatically of getting paid on that outstanding balance. If your client doesn't know what they owe you, they can't pay it. And the third feature that we find, found highly correlated with the best performing firms was the use of bulk billing. Bulk billing allows you to dramatically reduce the amount of time you're spending on generating bills. And with just a few clicks, you can send invoices out for all of your unbilled activities with just a few simple clicks. And by the way, there's this thing we see every month in Clio called Billing Week. It's the first week of the month, and I can show you the graphs. 
our customer support calls, our app usage, the amount of traffic on Clio.com, all spikes dramatically in the first week of the month. But by the way, there's no reason that needs to happen. You can be continuously con invoicing your clients through the month as you're delivering work product to them. And I'll describe later why that's so important. But this idea of bulk billing is something you could just do on a weekly or even a daily basis. Get your bills out the door for the work product and the whip you've got on the go on a continuous basis. Now I'll show you the improvements these three features drive, again, with a very data-driven analysis. These three features are driving 25%, 26%, and 21% more in the way of realization rate and lockup gains in our law firms. It's an incredible way to dramatically improve realization in your firm by just adopting a few very low friction features. So we talked about how you can improve realization rate and reduce realization lockup. What are the best ways you can improve collections? And what's interesting is it's mostly the same story. The first two, the top two most impactful features are emailing bills, again, meet your clients where they are, and sending these outstanding bill balances on a continuous basis. The third lever, and this was interesting to us, was sending trust requests. And obviously getting the money on your side of the fence in the form of a retainer, in the form of trust funds sitting in your trust account, is going to dramatically reduce the amount of time you need to spend chasing after clients after you've delivered work product to them. If you're working with client funds in trust and you're using Clio, you can easily share an online trust request to your clients which allows them to deposit trust funds electronically using either credit card or ACH transfer. And the key again here is sending an electronic request. You're not sending them snail mail, asking them to send a check back, you're sending an electronic request that they can fulfill in just a few minutes. And again, we saw some very interesting gains in collection rate uh, that are not as substantial as what we saw with realization rate, but again, we're already at about 90% on collection rate overall. So these are incremental gains that our gains will take any day of the week. We're able to drive a 5%, 3%, and 3% respective increase in our collection rate with those three features. Now, I want to next talk about the impact of online payments. There are some incredible data points that we can share with you now that we're two years into building our own native payments platform at Clio called Clio Payments. And we've seen some incredible impacts from Clio Payments on the law firms that are using it. If there is just one slide you take away from this LTR presentation, it's this one. And this shows you that online payments dramatically cut down on the amount of friction that is involved in paying a bill, and that in turn has a dramatic impact on the time clients take to pay bills. And we see the median time for a bill to get paid cut in half when you're offering online payments. Furthermore, when we did our qualitative consumer survey as part of the Legal Trends Report, paying bills by credit card was ranked as the most preferred option among clients. So this not only advantages you in cutting your, your time to get paid in half, but you're also delivering to clients what they want. This is also something we're really excited, by the way, to bring to the UK. We brought Clio Payments to Canada last year, and earlier this year we launched Clio Payments in the UK. Now the reason online payments and delivering bills frequently and delivering bills electronically is so important, is something that reminded me of, when I was exploring this data, what it reminded me of was a book I read way back when I was starting Flio. It was after meeting Jay Foonberg uh, at a legal uh, CLE conference. And Jay gave me a copy of his book that I've got signed on, on a bookshelf back at home still. And one of the concepts Jay talks about in this book is the Foonberg gratitude curve. Who's heard of this Foonberg gratitude curve? Okay, yeah, maybe like 10% of people, so I'm going to explain it. 
It's a pretty straightforward concept, but it's surprising how many law firms get this catastrophically wrong. His idea is really straightforward. When you begin your client journey with a new client, they start off not really knowing who you are. They're a bit nervous. Are you going to be able to help solve their legal issue? They start working with you. They start liking you. And then you resolve their legal issue. You help them form that company or you help them buy that house, whatever the case might be. And they think you are the best lawyer on the planet. They're telling their friends about you. But then a few weeks go by, they get the rest of their bills for their house purchase. And they, they start to forget what a great lawyer you are they start to, you kind of fade in the background. And then, you know what? That's exactly when most lawyers send their bill. Six months after the work product's been delivered, they've reached that emotional high, and they get yet another bill in the mail after the other 15 bills they've got from their other service providers and think, damn it, I'm gonna stuff this in my drawer and try to forget about it as long as I can. Jay says, instead, when you should be sending that invoice is when the client is at the peak of the gratitude curve, they think you're the best lawyer on the planet, you send them a bill, and you get paid. And as straightforward a concept as this is, so many lawyers don't bill at the peak of the curve, and instead bill when, they're, when you're seeing dramatically diminishing payment follow through, and you're seeing slow time to pay from clients as well. So the takeaway here is that you should be billing your clients electronically, you should be billing them frequently and you should be billing them as close to you can as the, at the peak of this Foonberg gratitude curve as you can. And if you do this well, you're going to reduce your realization lockup, you're going to reduce your collection lockup, and you're going to dramatically improve your cash flow. So I know that was a lot, and believe it or not, that was just the very high-level overview of some of the incredible findings we've got in this year's Legal Trends Report. I encourage you to attend the Unpacking the 2020 Legal Trends Report at 1 p.m. today with Joshua Lennon. And we're also hosting a hands-on workshop at 2.45 uh, p.m. today about applying the 2023 LTR insights to your firm. So if this sounds really interesting at an academic level, but you're wondering how do I put this to work in my practice, both uh, the session later this afternoon as well as the workshop will help you go to that next level of detail and really dig in on the report. So look, one of the key takeaways from this year's Legal Trends Report is that the legal profession is more productive than it's ever been. However, it's a bit premature for us to take a victory lap because despite these incredible productivity gains, there's still so much legal demand below the surface. We have an access to justice problem that isn't improving, and in fact, by many measures, it's getting worse. There's a stat I talk about a lot, and it's the stat from the World Justice Project that 77% of legal issues do not receive support from a legal professional. And this data is reinforced by the Institute for the Advancement of, American legal, of the American Legal System, who reports that 55 million Americans confront a staggering 260 million legal problems annually. And of those, a shocking 120 million go unresolved. The number of Americans grappling with legal issues is 55 times greater than the number of lawyers in all of America. But I want us to think about this access to justice problem in a different way. This is a product market fit problem. Lawyers are simply not providing legal services in a way that most clients want to or are able to consume them. And this is the fundamental issue we've got to address. An economist would look at this and be so confused. We've got this huge amount of unmet demand with legal issues that are going unresolved. And when we look at the Legal Trends Report data, we see 80% of lawyers tell us the number one thing they need to grow their firm is more clients. So we've got the supply of people that want to solve those legal problems. 
And again, any economist would look at the two sides of this supply and demand equation and wonder, what the hell is wrong with this industry? Why can't we meet this demand with supply that is hungry to address those problems? This mismatch creates what I like to call the latent legal market. This is a hidden market that is not being served by lawyers today, that we do see innovative new solutions finding ways to tap into that latent legal market, but somehow we're not able to do that at scale yet. And I think that's a challenge for us over the next decade, is how do we solve this problem together? This latent legal market is a massive opportunity, by the way. When we look at the 23% of demand that is addressed by lawyers today, that's a $600 billion annual market. So a bit of back of the napkin math implies that this latent legal market is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity if we can figure out how to unlock that, not only in the US, but worldwide. What we need to do this, I believe, is the breakthrough technologies we've seen with artificial intelligence will allow us to amplify the impact of the legal industry and finally start to make significant progress on unlocking the latent legal market and in bridging the yawning gap between supply and demand, between clients that have legal problems and lawyers that can help address those problems. Before I jump into the discussion of artificial intelligence and why I think that might be the case, and by the way, I may sound as crazy as I did in 2008 when I said the cloud is the future for legal. I want to give you a bit of a perspective on my background and why this moment for AI and legal is really a pretty neat collision of two worlds for me. Way back in 2004, I was wrapping up my master's degree in computer science, where I specialized in machine learning, and I was building, my thesis was about building recommender systems using neural networks and Bayesian networks. And so I was deep in this world of machine learning. When I finished my master's degree, I thought really seriously about pursuing a PhD in machine learning. I interviewed at the University of Toronto and I interviewed with and was offered a spot at one of the most prestigious machine learning schools in the world. And that was to work with Jeff Hinton. And some of you might recognize that name because today, Jeff was already famous in 2004. Today, he's even more famous as, as what many people call the grandfather of AI. Jeff developed many of the breakthroughs in neural networks and back, back propagation algorithms that form the basis and the backbone for what large language models are today. But back in 2004, there wasn't any industry jobs in AI. There wasn't the Amazons and the Googles of the world hiring up machine learning engineers by the hundreds and by the thousands. So the choice for me at that point was really, do I go into academia or do I go into industry? And I felt like academia just kind of was such a narrow path where you become the world expert in some small little niche of the machine learning world. And I decided that wasn't right for me. And I instead obviously went into industry. And while that's been a successful path for me, I always was left wondering what would that path in machine learning have led to. And something I couldn't have anticipated when I founded Clio in 2008 is that almost 20 years after that fork in the road in 2004, those two worlds would collide in a really, really exciting way. That some of the very same innovations and early large language models that we were exploring in 2004, 20 years later, with a scale of data, being ingested by those systems, and a scale of processing power that nobody could have imagined in 2004 would create the backbone for large language models and a revolutionary technology for the legal industry. So for me, this is a really neat dovetailing of my academic interests and my professional interests. And I'm excited to share with you a few of my perspectives on what I think the future of AI will mean for legal, and in particular, what AI will mean for you in terms of its impact on Clio. So here's my high-level take. AI will help us deliver better legal outcomes to more clients. 
and it will improve the livelihood of legal professionals delivering those services. So the headline, I think, is extremely optimistic and positive. But before we can talk about the positives of AI, I think we need to first clarify and clear away some of the myths about AI. For decades, we've seen AI depicted as a threat, putting into question the role of human beings, putting into question our safety, and also introducing some real risk to us as a society. But what's so interesting is that AI, real AI, finally entered the mainstream just under a year ago, wrapped in a pretty innocuous package. No robots, no glowing red eyes, just a conversational text interface that really belied the tremendous complexity and sophistication and power beneath. I remember the first couple of hours I spent with ChatGPT, I was interacting with thinking, no big deal, this just feels like another support chatbot. And then I started asking it real questions, and I realized, wow, th this, is, this is a level that I've never seen before. And it was one of those moments I felt like the first time I saw cloud computing, the first time I picked up an iPhone, that same kind of wonder at what, what AI had be become. And I wasn't alone in that reaction. When ChatGPT was released in November of last year, it rapidly became the fastest growing app of all time. ChatGPT reached one million users faster than any other consumer app in history. And it broke the record for being the fast fastest app to break 100 million users as well. Sorry. So this breakthrough of this new wave of generative AI is powered by large language models. And it's not only sparked tremendous innovation with companies like OpenAI, but it's prompted what I would describe as a Cambrian explosion of AI startups, with hundreds of new AI startups having been founded just this year alone. AI is the biggest innovation we've seen in a generation. <clears throat> it's an advance as significant as the invention of the transistor or the PC. Like the cloud and the smartphone, AI is going to reshape every industry it touches. But what does that mean for legal in particular? Well, it's pretty clear the impact is going to be tectonic. By now, many of you have seen this report from Goldman Sachs, which said legal is the industry that will experience the second most significant impact from AI, with 44% of legal tasks being candidates for automation by AI. Like any technology, there's gonna be a learning curve, and we've already seen some serious missteps, like this New York case where a lawyer relied on ChatGPT to write a motion on his behalf. And ChatGPT did a pretty good job. This motion was really compelling. The only problem with it was the five cases the motion cited were hallucinated by ChatGPT and didn't exist. Minor detail. Now, this Manhattan lawyer has joined the ranks of other lawyers to have what we might call challenges with emerging technologies. The risk of hallucinations, confabulations, and bias are just some of the concerns we rightfully should be concerned about with AI and do need to address with this new generation of AI tools. But significant strides in the right direction are already being made, and the pace of progress, as incredible as it's already been, is accelerating. So, there's a ton of excitement and concern about AI and legal, but the general zeitgeist seems to center around one question. And that is, will AI replace lawyers? And my answer is an emphatic no. And we're going to look to history to tell this story and to reassure you that we've got a very promising opportunity ahead of us.
but let's start by rewinding all the way back to the first Industrial Revolution. Back in the first Industrial Revolution, there was resistance to the mechanical loom for fear it would cause widespread job losses. The resistance to these mechanical looms led to the term Luddite, and this originated from Ned Ludd and his followers who opposed the introduction of the mechanical loom. Ned and his buddies would raid factories and destroy these new mechanical looms for fear they would take away from their jobs. Today's Luddites are similarly trying to block advances in AI. Now let's fast forward from the mechanical loom a few hundred years to the 1960s. What we're depicting here is Jack Lemmon playing C.C. Baxter in the apartment in 1960. And what C.C. Baxter is doing here is doing accounting work using an electromechanical adding machine here. That's an eventual predecessor to the computer. Now, what's incredible, when you look at what C.C. Baxter is doing here, he's basically doing the work of one cell in an Excel spreadsheet. That was his whole day. And what's even more incredible is that everyone else in this room that you see in the background also toiling away on an electromechanical adding machine is also doing the work of another cell in that Excel spreadsheet. So effectively, this building is a living, breathing Excel spreadsheet powered by humans and electromechanical adding machines. Now, a short two decades later, we had computers. And in 1979, Dan Bricklin invented VisiCalc, the first computer spreadsheet and the predecessor to Microsoft Excel. All of a sudden, this was virtually overnight, what used to be an entire room full of CC Baxters toiling away on, on adding machines was replaced by hitting F9 in VisiCalc. Now, this innovation of spreadsheets sparked fears in accountants in the late 70s and early 80s that they would be replaced by spreadsheets and computers, that employment in accounting would decline. Does this sound familiar? But what's interesting is the opposite happened. The spreadsheet did not drive a reduction in employment in accounting, but in fact had the opposite impact. Since the spreadsheet's inception in 1979, employment in the accounting field has nearly doubled, and pay has also increased substantially over that time period. Rather than hindering the profession, the advent of the spreadsheet helped amplify the impact of accountants that learned how to use these spreadsheets to their advantage. Work that used to take minutes or seconds all of a sudden, or sorry, work that used to take days or weeks now took minutes or seconds, and the accounts that mastered spreadsheets found themselves more productive, and they moved themselves up the value chain with the clients they were working with. I found this quote and thought it was fascinating. Let's read this quote from Dan Bricklin. People would tell me I was doing all this work, and coworkers thought I was amazing. But I was really goofing off because it only took an hour and then I took the rest of the day off. People thought I was a wonder kid, but I was just using this tool. And by the way, Dan is not talking about ChatGPT. Dan is talking about VisiCalc. He was so productive when he had this secret weapon of VisiCalc at his disposal, he was able to finish what was normally a day's work in less than an hour. This gives us insight, I think, and really key insight into how AI might play out in legal. History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Ultimately, this isn't a matter of AI replacing lawyers any more than spreadsheets replaced accountants. AI won't make lawyers irrelevant, but those who embrace it will dominate over those that do not. I believe embracing AI to amplify the impact of the legal profession, oh, sorry, give me a second. 
Ultimately, this isn't a matter of AI replacing lawyers any more than spreadsheets replace accountants. AI won't make lawyers irrelevant, but it will make lawyers that deny the impact of AI increasingly irrelevant. Those lawyers leveraging AI, like the accountants before them, will be able to move up the value chain. That's reason enough to embrace AI, by the way. But if we zoom out, we can see even greater benefits, not just for individual lawyers or law firms, but for the entire legal industry. I believe embracing AI to amplify the impact of the legal profession as a whole is something we should consider as a moral imperative. That's how we address this tremendous gap between legal demand and legal supply and the impact this gap has on millions of lives. I also want to talk about some of the ways that we misperceive AI as a risk to the number of people that can participate in the legal profession. One of the causes of this is we tend to see legal as a zero-sum game, and that if we embrace AI and automation, that will take away from legal jobs. This is a fallacy called the lump of labor fallacy, which in a nutshell orients around the idea there's a fixed amount of work, a lump of labor to be done, and that any new technology will take away from the humans that are addressing that lump of labor. However, over and over in our history, this assumption has proven to be false. What we see is, in fact, the opposite. These technology waves actually increase employment. Technology makes goods and services more affordable, which in turn increases demand, which in turn expands the total addressable market. In the legal space, my view is that technology writ large, and AI in particular, can have a dramatic impact on, in, on productivity, and that that impact on productivity will in turn expand the total addressable market for legal services. We can make legal services more affordable, improve product market fit, and increase both the quantity and quality of employment in the legal industry. I do really believe we should look at AI as an opportunity to expand the size of the legal economy dramatically and to deliver better services and better outcomes to our clients and to expand the number of the clients we can deliver legal solutions to. If we succeed at growing the legal economy, we are definitionally succeeding in helping solve the access to justice gap as well. If we execute on this opportunity, we eliminate the latent legal market and we grow the size of the legal economy by an order of magnitude. So, hopefully you're all excited by the AI-enabled future for legal and the opportunity it presents to us to amplify our impact not only individually, but as an industry. So, you might be asking yourself, what does all of this mean? And in particular, what does it mean for Clio? And I'm super excited to share with you what we're doing to bring AI to life within Clio. We see an unparalleled opportunity for AI to fundamentally transform how legal professionals work. As the operating system for legal, Clio touches the full span of everything you do in your law firm, from intake to payment. This puts us in a unique position to leverage AI to address challenges and opportunities in ways that none of us ever imagined. As we embrace on this next chapter, our commitment to you, our customers, is that you can rely on us in the same way you've relied on us for the last 15 years. We will lead you into this new frontier, helping you to determine where you should implement AI in your law firm, supporting you when you have questions, and keeping you and your clients' data safe 
and secure. Running a law firm is hard. We hear from you every day that you have way too much going on, remembering all the things you need to do, all the people you need to talk to, and where you need to focus your energies to help grow your firm. Now, I want you to imagine a partner tirelessly keeping a watchful eye on all the balls you have in the air, ensuring nothing ever gets dropped, enabling you to deliver a superior client experience, make more productive decisions, and manage and grow your firm more quickly and with less effort. This isn't a distant dream, by the way. This is the near future. And I'm really excited to introduce you to Clio's first step into this new AI frontier. Meet Clio Duo. Clio Duo is designed to be your dynamic AI-powered partner. Always there, ready to help you make the most of your working day. With the help of AI, Clio Duo will help you navigate your day, from your first meeting to your last email. Let me give you just a couple of examples. Clio Duo, can you summarize this document? Sure, this document is a patent application for a legal AI tool. Great, how about generating bills for all my outstanding activity? Okay, I've generated four bills with a total of $160,000. You can even get personalized recommendations for your firm. What should I be focusing on today? You have a meeting with Howard Turner at 10 a.m. Here's the latest updates for this matter. And not only that, we're thinking about how Clio Duo will help take your firm to the next level. You can ask questions about your firm's performance and you'll get meaningful recommendations on how you can improve your practice. Clio Duo has the same level of security, compliance, and privacy you already trust. With the audit log functionality, you can be confident that all activity that Clio Duo takes on your behalf will be logged and discoverable. Clio Duo isn't just a helper. It's an AI-powered guide, a team member. It's the result of countless hours of our work to supercharge yours and we're just getting started. Yes. Who else is excited about Clio Duo? So look, Clio Duo is one of the most exciting projects that we've embarked on in Clio in the last decade. It's so exciting to be bringing a new set of capabilities, an AI partner that can help you grow your firm in a more seamless way, help you with your tasks, help you get noise out of the way and help elevate your firm to the next level. With Clio Duo, we really do see AI as your superpower. It gives you abilities to analyze vast amounts of data, predict outcomes with unparalleled accuracy, and to help you deliver justice with unprecedented efficiency. Clio Duo is going to be a game changer, and we're inviting all of you to help co-create what Clio Duo's set of capabilities are. You can scan this QR code to answer a quick survey and help shape the future of what Clio Duo is able to do. And you can also join the wait list to get early access to Clio Duo. You can also join us downstairs in our product lab to experience Clio Duo hands-on. And you can try it out yourself and give us your feedback. We're really excited about this first venture into the world of AI in Clio with Clio Duo. Now, if there's one thing you want, I want you to take away from this discussion of AI, it's this, and it's that you're indispensable. AI isn't going to replace lawyers, but as I said, lawyers that leverage AI will displace those that don't. AI is going to amplify your impact, and you're all in this room because you're innovators, because you thrive on being ahead of the curve. You also know the importance of being there for your clients. So the last thought on AI I'll leave you with is this, and it's paradoxical sounding, 
And that is AI is going to give us the opportunity to be more human in our day-to-day -day practice. Rather than turning lawyers into robots, AI will help take the robotic tasks away from lawyers and legal professionals. If AI is the tool that helps us carry the burden of running a law firm, it in turn optimizes our time so that we, the humans, can focus on the more meaningful work of connecting and helping other human beings. And that's really what I think is the most powerful impact AI can have on how we practice day to day. The other piece of this opportunity I want to spend a moment talking about is the fact that embracing AI today can help you get ahead of the curve in the same way that embracing the cloud in 2008 would have helped you get ahead of the curve in a dramatic way as well. This is an incredible opportunity. If we look at this technology diffusion curve that we're used to looking at, AI is in the very early stages of its growth, but it can already have a dramatic impact on your law firm. If you can make sure you're in the innovators or early adopters part of this diffusion curve, you're going to be years, if not a decade ahead of many of your colleagues and many of your competitors. There's people in this technology diffusion curve still trying to figure out if the cloud is secure. And while they're trying to figure that out, you can run laps around them by embracing the power AI has to offer to your law firm. Now let's shift gears away from AI and some of the ways we are delivering capabilities for you to amplify your impact dramatically today with the biggest set of product announcements I've ever had the privilege of sharing with you on stage here at ClioCon. Over the course of this year, we've already released over 200 new features and enhancements to Clio. And that's before I jump into some of the incredible announcements we've got releasing at ClioCon today. The first is that we're starting to invest in solutions for specific practice areas with Clio. Clio has historically been designed as what we describe as a practice area agnostic platform, meaning no matter what your practice area is, Clio will be a great fit for you. And while we'll continue investing in Clio as the horizontal platform for legal, we're really excited this year to embark on the journey of building deep functionality for specific practice areas, and the number of those practice areas will expand over time. But I've got our first two initial practice areas to share with you today. The first is legal aid. And this is something we care about deeply. Thank you. We're really excited to announce a new set of capabilities that helps make the life of people working in legal aid organizations so much easier than it's been in the past. As you know, many of these organizations are funded by grants and have a large amount of tracking they need to stay on top of to access those grants. Our new legal aid solution is built to streamline and facilitate all of the processes legal aid organizations need to deliver the important work they're doing. This is something that is highly aligned with our mission as well. When we talk about transforming the legal experience for all, this is the for all part of the, that mission statement. Remember those access to justice stats I talked about. There are 55 million Americans dealing with 260 million legal problems a year, almost half of which go unresolved. The need for productivity and efficiency in this segment of the market is greater than it's ever been. With our new legal aid functionality shipping this quarter, nonprofits that provide legal services through both grant funding and sliding scale fees will be able to create and manage grants and funding sources, report on grant deliverables, calculate intake eligibility, and more, all right from within Clio. This is a great illustration of how Clio helps organizations who provide legal aid services the opportunity to amplify their impact. 
This is so important because even a small 1% increase in efficiency in U.S. legal aid services, according to data from the Legal Services Corporation, could lead to closing an additional three cases per hour, potentially benefiting over 15,000 individuals annually. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to our plans for specialization, particularly in areas like civil and criminal litigation, IP, and estate planning. Now, this next announcement is one of the most exciting announcements we've ever brought to ClioCon. And again, it's not just because of what it means for Clio today, but because it's charting the course for what our, our next few years will look like. We're thrilled for the second practice area specific add-on for Clio to be for personal injury lawyers. Embedded in Clio Manage and designed to make it easy to navigate complex legal frameworks, deal with contingency-based payment, and handle confidential medical records makes being a personal injury lawyer particularly challenging. We get how hard this is, and we've heard your stories. Which is why, natively now within Clio, PI firms can now organize medical records and bills with ease and spend less time tracking down missing information. They can make quick, informed decisions with comprehensive settlement estimates that take into account every lien, damage, and fee, easily track expenses, and quickly distribute settlement funds. Paired with Clio's leading client experience and management capabilities, personal injury firms now have a solution designed just for them to help them move cases forward and deliver the best possible outcomes for their clients. This new suite of tools will be available to select users to purchase starting this Friday, and you can join the wait list and see personal injury for Clio uh, live down in our product lab today in our level up area. We're thrilled to see the positive impact our new personal injury add-on for lawyers already having on some of our early access customers. This quote is from Bob Simon of the Simon Law Group that talks about how he found Clio's personal injury add-on to be a game changer for his law firm. I'm also really excited to see how our integration ecosystem is coming to life to help amplify the impact of our new practice area specific add-ons. One great example is EvenUp. EvenUp is one of the hottest technology companies in legal tech. And we're proud not just to be a partner of EvenUp, but an investor in EvenUp through our venture arm, Clio Ventures. EvenUp turns medical records and cases into AI-driven demand packages. And we're thrilled to have a deep integration with them that lets you generate these packages directly from within Clio. Even up is early in its growth story, but it's already trusted by over 300 of the top personal injury firms in the US. And these firms have been able to drive 30% larger payouts and save 50% relative to their traditional method of drafting these documents from scratch. It's a really incredible technology in another way the overall app ecosystem is helping transform different practice areas. The second integration that I'm really excited to talk about relating to this personal injury expansion is a referral network called Attorney Share. Attorney Share is a referral network that allows PI lawyers to refer out and accept personal injury cases in a private, trusted, and vetted network of other PI lawyers. And all of that referral traffic can be centralized and addressed directly from Clio Grow. So it's a really exciting new platform that we're developing as the first practice management platform to integrate directly with Attorney Share. You can check that out uh, by accessing this QR code and sign up for early access. So let's zoom out a bit. We're really excited about this new chapter with PI and legal aid. But let's move on to some of the incredible features we've got that will impact every Clio customer. 
Over the past couple of years, we've been focusing on technologies that help you run your law firm more efficiently when it comes to interacting with the courts. In 2021, we acquired both Calendar Rules and Law Yaw and integrated them into our core platform to help make it easier for our customers to do things like calendaring key legal dates and interacting with automatic court forms. What we've been left with, however, is the last mile. The last mile between Clio and the courts and actually filing those crucial documents with the courts. And today, we're thrilled to announce that Clio will be the first ever legal practice management platform to include a seamless way to file your documents directly with the courts. With Clio File, you can file, serve, and deliver court documents electronically without ever leaving Clio Manage. No integration required. You can start a new case or add files to an exist active case quickly and easily. No more uploading, downloading, and switching between tools. Forget about the stress of verifying various court requirements because Clio file stays on top of court deadlines and rules so you don't have to. With instant status updates and court stamped copies directly synced to, to Clio, you don't have to worry about whether or not your documents have been received and processed. All your invoicing also li lives within Clio. You don't need to coordinate between multiple systems. You can also use automatic fee expensing to easily bill through 100% of your filing costs to your clients. Now, again, Clio File is the only solution built natively into a legal practice management system, and it's the simplest, easiest way for you to file documents with a court. You can test Clio File out down in the product lab today, and I encourage you to let them know if you'd like to see Clio File brought to your estate, which will begin in early 2024 and expand rapidly from there to various states. Next, let's next talk about some really exciting enhancements we've made to Clio Grow. In our digital first world, Referrals are not enough anymore. Digital marketing is the key that unlocks more clients. We know from our survey data that most of you, most of us, find digital marketing challenging. It's hard, and it's something you need to stay on top of if you're not going to waste a lot of money. And this is why we teamed up with Google to deliver an easy and cost-effective way for you to find new clients. It's called Google Local Service Ads for Clio, and it enables you to show up at the very top of Google results for highly relevant searches in your area. For example, a typical client search might be family lawyer near me. Now your ad is placed at the top of that page alongside your Google rating and contact information. This removes the need for you to think about creative ad copy or design, design banner ads. And here's the really key part. Unlike traditional pay-per-click advertising, where you pay for every click on your ad, whether it's a relevant click or not, with local service ads, you only pay when you're contacted through the ad. And best of all, local service ads are built right into Clio Grow, so you can set up and manage your ads right there without ever leaving Clio. The breakthrough with the local service ads is that you don't need to worry about this famous quote about not knowing which half of your marketing budget you're wasting. You're not wasting any of your marketing budget. You're only paying for spend that generates a lead. And with Clio Grow's analytics, you can track the full picture of the ROI of that lead as they eventually become a client and maybe eventually have multiple matters with you. This is a revolutionary moment for legal marketing. I'll show you an example of just how revolutionary this is. Joe Runkel is one of our customers that got early access to local service ads for Clio. Like many of us, Joe struggled with marketing prior to implementing local services ads. But once he started using local service ads for Clio, Joe generated $100,000 in profit over a six-month period. 
he saw a 10x return on investment. And that's something that inspires all of us. That's exactly what we hope to do with marketing. And with Clio Grow and local service ads for Clio, you'll have the most trackable ROI positive marketing platform on the planet. So that's local services ads for Clio. Now, I've just talked about some exciting ways to generate leads in Clio. The next step is getting a consult booked. When we analyzed client intake data over the last few years, we saw it took an average of eight emails between lawyer and client to set up an appointment. And what's worse is we often saw at the end of those eight emails and an appointment, there would be a no-show at the end of that. And we want better for you. We want to work to determine how to shrink those eight emails to zero and how to eliminate the no-show altogether. I know many of you are already familiar with Clio Scheduler. You can use it to seamlessly manage your calendar and enable it to help your clients pick out just, or put in their info, pick a time, and confirm their appointment, eliminating entirely those e eight emails we talked about earlier. Now you can improve this experience by customizing your appointment invitation, confirmation, and reminder emails. On top of that, you can schedule up to five automatic text reminders to make sure your clients know exactly when and where we're meet you're meeting. And we think we all know those clients that need the five reminders to make sure they're showing up on time. And with text messaging automation, you can even automate sending intake forms and agreements for e-signature by text, which is increasingly becoming the preferred method of communication for clients. The response to these innovations has been incredible, and I encourage you to explore and adopt some of these new capabilities in Clio Grow. I'm also excited to announce some long requested automation capabilities within Clio Grow. Clio Grow can now automatically complete your most time consuming intake tasks thanks to our new automated workflow feature. Automated workflows are a fast, simple way to cut down on the time you spend on these routine processes, like managing incoming inquiries. It ensures nothing is lost and that you're delivering on a consistent client experience over time. A typical Clio Grow automation workflow might look like this. A lead comes in. Clio sends an initial email on your behalf, followed by an appointment booking request, and that's followed by your preferred intake form once the client has booked their appointment. If you're excited to dive into these incredible capabilities, all three of these features, Google local service ads, automated intake workflows, and enhanced appointment communications are available in Clio Grow as of today. By the way, we've also heard you loud and clear on wanting better data integration between Clio Manage and Clio Grow. We've recently launched a new data interchange layer that allows you to seamlessly synchronize your data between Clio Manage and Clio Grow. And the first place we're bringing that to life is with contacts. And what that means for you is that the contacts in your Clio data, thank you, yeah, the engineering team loves to hear that applause. So, some pretty incredible leaps forward for Clio Grow. We're freeing up your routine time, freeing you up from routine tasks like screening and employment planning and helping you effortlessly grow your firm through features like local service ads for Clio. Now, let's look next to Clio Manage. We know many of you spend a large portion of your day in Clio Manage, and we're excited about helping you not only track your time, but optimize your time in the way that you're using Clio Manage. I'll give you one quick example of what this looks like. We looked at our data and saw that creating a new matter, a, a, a complex matter in Clio Manage, was taking up to 15 minutes. What we've introduced to help address that problem is matter templates. Matter templates simplify the process of creating new matters by providing a pre-built step-by-step guide to creating a new matter for everyone in your firm. This ensures new matters are consistent and accurate without any surprises cropping on later on, such as missing details 
or incorrect cu custom fields. This cuts down what was sometimes a 15-minute process for creating a new matter to something that just takes a few seconds. The other issue we tackled is that you're not just dealing with the complexity of setting up a new matter, but the complexity of juggling, juggling all the matters you have on the go. Many of you are juggling dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of active matters at a time, and knowing exactly where each one is at is no small task. In thinking about how we can improve this, we looked to a Japanese innovation called the Kanban board. The first Kanban board was developed by Taichu Ono for the Toyota Corporation as he designed their lean manufacturing process. The concept is simple. You have different columns representing different stages of production on this Kanban board, and as production advances, you move individual projects forward from left to right. These might be cars in the production process, these might be features in a software development process, or these might be matters in a law firm. It's a simple but powerful way of keeping track of your work. And that's why we're so excited to bring what we call matter stages to Clio Manage. Matter stages, thank you. Matter stages clearly show your work in progress, giving you a high level of oversight of your various cases. You can organize your boards by category and simply drag and drop matters to the appropriate column as they progress. As you can see, the feedback on this is tremendous so far, and thank you for your feedback and support with this feature. Another feature I want to quickly mention is that we've now made emailing directly out of Clio Manage using your email address that you're using in either Gmail or Outlook in a way that it looks like a native email directly from those email clients to your client. Thank you. Now, let's talk about mobile. We're really excited about some innovations we've got coming to a few different aspects of your mobile experience with Clio. Starting with our incredibly popular Clio for Clients mobile app. I know a lot of you are already using this app with your clients, and if you're not, you probably should be, and I'll show you why. Number one, the lawyers in this room and in our broader community are servicing almost a quarter million clients this year alone through the Clio for Clients app. We hear from our customers constantly that this saves them an immeasurable amount of work. They just don't get the calls, the texts, the emails about how their case is going anymore. Their communications with their clients are dramatically more efficient. What's even more incredible is this app has a rating of 4.9 on the App Store from over 2,000 ratings. And I'll remind you, this set of reviews is from the clients using this app. They love it, and it makes you look good when you're using this app to your clients. Clients absolutely love using this app. And again, as I mentioned, Clear for Clients replaces the need for emails, setting up meetings, making phone calls, and sending documents via email and other forms. All your communications are centralized in the app. We've added some neat new features to Clear for Clients. Clio for clients, or sorry, clients can now bulk upload documents to you in a very streamlined form. And you now have the power to also notify clients of all upcoming events in Clio for clients, such as court dates and meetings, and populate into the central Clio for clients calendar so they can keep track of what's going on with you. Communications with clients is so important. Doing it well builds trust and builds your reputation. One last thing on the Clio for Clients front. There are more than 41 million Spanish-speaking individuals in the United States. That's a big slice of the population. That's why we're thrilled to also announce that Clio for Clients is now available in Spanish. Thank you. With just a couple of clicks in the Clio for Clients interface, your clients can easily translate or, or move into an interface that is entirely in Spanish, including the notifications they'll receive from the app. So 
lots of exciting enhancements for Clio for clients, and the incredible experience it allows you to seamlessly deliver to your clients. But let's get back to you. You need on-the-go options as much as your clients do. And we've got some exciting innovations coming to the Clio mobile app that we've designed for you. Now, you love this app almost as much as your clients love Clio for clients with a rating of 4.8. And again, we've got over 5,000 reviews on the App Store of our customers that love the Clio mobile app. We've added some new capabilities that are going to help amplify the impact you're able to have on the go. One of those is now you have the ability to create new matters and edit existing matters right from the mobile app. This includes matter details, custom fields, matter permissions, and even bi bi billing details. Second, we've also turned the mobile app into a handheld document scanner. You can now seamlessly convert paper documents into PDFs and add them to Clio with just a few clicks. I think I heard someone clapping over there. You can, that's okay. You can keep clapping. Pretty exciting innovation uh, with this document scanner. Third, we've improved the way you view, view bills in the app, empowering you to have real-time billing conversations with your clients when they're right in front of you. You can now access a complete list of all bills you've invoiced for a specific client, and when you tap on a bill, you can see all the detail exactly as, as it's presented to your customer and client. And finally, this is pretty cool, we've added Siri support to the Clio mobile app so that you can simply tell Siri to start a timer in Clio, and it will start that timer in a completely hands-free basis. All you need to do is tell your phone to start a timer in Clio, complete the task, and then stop the timer, and you'll be prompted by the Clio mobile app to add the appropriate details. It's simple and as hands-free as that. Now, what we're seeing with mobile devices is how they're being used for a whole set of things that we didn't anticipate 15 years ago when the iPhone was introduced. What we're seeing is that increasingly, on an everyday basis, people are using their phones to pay for things. And that's why we're excited to announce two new mobile-friendly innovations that we're bringing to Clio Payments, our industry-leading online payments platform. First, clients can now pay their bills using Apple Pay and Google Pay. And I'm curious, who in the room has used Apple Pay or Google Pay? Put up your hand. Almost everyone. Now, keep your, keep your hand up if you love it. Yeah, everyone's keeping their hand up. This is a game changer. The first time you use Apple Pay or Google Pay, you never want to pull out your credit card again. You never want to fill out your billing information and address again. It is incredible. Digital wallet options like Apple Pay and Google Pay are rapidly displacing credit cards as the preferred method of payment for consumers. According to a recent article by Forbes, more than half of Americans use Google Pay or Apple Pay more often than their traditional credit card methods already, which is incredible. Needless to say, it's fast and convenient for clients, and the more you can do to make paying you fast and convenient, the better. I'm also proud to say Clio is the only legal practice management provider to offer this capability. So let's look at how this works and how easy paying an invoice is for your client when you send it to them via mobile. First, they receive their bill by email or via their Clio for Clients app. Next, they simply click Pay Online Now, which activates the Apple Pay workflow. The client double-clicks the side button on their iPhone, uses Face ID to authenticate, and that's it. There's no step three. Your bill is paid. They don't have to enter contact information, credit card information, or even touch the keyboard on their phone. This is what effortless payments look like. And again, the potential benefits to your firm are huge. And by embracing these features today, you're going to be ahead of the curve as these payment methods become the dominant way consumers pay over the next decade. Now, we didn't stop at supporting Apple Pay and Google Pay. I am so excited about this next feature, just because from a geek level, it's super cool. It's called Tap to Pay, and it allows you to transform your iPhone 
into a tap-to-pay point-of-sale terminal. Meaning you or anyone on your team, I'll tell you more about the feature and then you can clap. <laughs> what this means is anyone on your team, if they're in the room with a client, can pull out their phone and use it as a tap-to-pay terminal to receive payment of your Clio invoice. Now that's worth clapping about, right? So let's walk through this tap to pay functionality. All you need to do is pull up the Clio mobile app, click new payment, select the tap to pay button, and all your client do, has to do is hold their credit card or debit card or their phone with Apple Pay or Google Pay activated, tap it on your phone, and you're done. Tap to pay is a seamless, frictionless experience, and once you use it, you don't want to ever go back. I want to bring to life just how powerful this is for you and your clients. And I'd like to ask Haymonth Kashyap, our brand new CPO, to join me up on stage. Come on out, Haymonth. Give it up for Haymonth, thank you. So this is Haymonth's first demo at a ClioCon. So we're gonna make it easy. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. Let's imagine Haymonth is my client. We've just wrapped up his case, he's pleased with the outcome, and I'm going to take advantage of that Foonberg gratitude curve and pounce on him and get my bill paid as soon as I can. And he's ready to pay. With tap to pay, it doesn't matter if I'm in my office downtown, it doesn't matter if I'm in the local coffee shop, or even on the Cleocon stage in front of 2,500 people. No, no pressure, hey month. All I have to do is take up my phone, bring up my bill, hit tap to pay, and Haymonth simply taps my phone with his credit card. There we go. And that's it. The bill's paid. Simple as that. You're going to love that sound. You're going to hear it a lot. And we're so excited to bring this feature to life. So we think the possibilities with mobile are incredible. And the possibilities for how you can put this work to life in your law firm is almost endless. I want to again remind you of this Foonberg gratitude curve and the way you embrace some of these new payment technologies and online payment technologies in your law firm have an opportunity to not just increase your client happiness and your happiness, but for you to have a dramatic impact on those law firm KPIs I talked about earlier. I want to wrap up our product discussion by highlighting some really exciting innovations we've had with LawYaw. LawYaw helps you automate PDFs, and one new capability we're rolling out with LawYaw is what we call questionnaires. Questionnaires allow you to essentially interview your clients and get them to populate the fields for your document automations in, in LawYaw. With questionnaires, you can accurately collect the information you need in the format you need it in. Responses from your clients can be reviewed and edited before you generate your court forms or Word documents with LawYaw. Once you've captured the re required data, LawYaw will route that information to any document of your choice. It's a really powerful way of streamlining and automating your document workflows. And you can find more about LawYaw down in the product lab if you're not familiar with it. The other thing we're really excited to announce is again the start of what we hope is a new era for document and form automation in Clio by partnering with the New York State Bar Association to bring over a thousand of their forms to LawYaw to help you automate those forms seamlessly. These forms range from a variety of contexts including surrogate court, estate planning system, family, guardianship, real property, and New York statutory power of attorney as well as the surrogate court forms. The New York State Bar Association is managing demand for these forms from the over 330,000 attorneys that are members of the New York State Bar Association. And we're really excited that the New York State Bar Association chose Clio as its preferred partner and its exclusive partner in bringing these forms to its membership. So one call out, by the way, is if you are in a bar association in a leadership capacity or a member of a bar association you'd like to see bring these forms to Clio and LawYaw so you can simplify your life, please let us know, get in touch. 
Now, to bring home this product discussion, and I know it's been a lot, I want to walk you through a bit of a workflow in terms of what this actually looks like from front to back. I've thrown a lot at you, and I want to distill this down into what these features could look like in the day of the life of a typical Clio firm. Starting with local services ads for Clio, I can now show up at the top of Google to capture a highly relevant potential client. And I can capture that client by using automation to complete my entire intake process, including the delivery of my desired intake form and consultation uh, communications. I can also schedule my initial meeting and through reminders needed to help my potential client through each step. Then I wrap up the intake process through a text message. That's also how I'll send my re retainer agreement and make it easy for my new client to successfully complete it through e-signature. Now I'm ready to push this new matter to Clio Manage, where my new client's contact details are already synced. Here I'll use my, new, my custom matter templates to ensure I've added all the necessary information as I know I'll be referring back to it frequently throughout the case. As the case moves along, I can manage its status and progress alongside my other active cases by using matter stages. When it comes to correspondence, I can also send emails right from Clio Manage, which will show up in my client's inbox as if they were coming directly from my Outlook account. I'll also empower my clients to work with me through the Clio for Clients app, where all of our communications calendar events, and case details are conveniently stored. Next, I'll use LawYaw's questionnaires to collect detailed information from my clients, all of which I'll pour into the necessary court forms and documents to save myself time and avoid errors. With Clio File, I'll submit completed documents to the courts faster than I've ever been able to do before. And whether I'm billing hourly on contingency or from a grant, I have everything I need to track my time, expenses, and activity so I can create a clear and accurate bill for my clients. And when it's time to collect payment, I'll use my app to pull up my client's bill, and they'll be able to quickly and effortlessly pay using Apple Pay. And when the case is finally wrapped, my client will cite the incredible experience she had with me through that entire workflow and give me a five-star review on Google and help that feedback loop and that virtuous cycle paying forward. So that's a high-level overview of how you can bring some of these incredible features to life in Clio. I want to wrap up the keynote highlighting a couple of areas of really exciting developments for us over the course of the last year. One is our app ecosystem, which is thriving with over 250 integration platforms, integration uh, add-ons on the platform. We're also adding our support to some of these integrations, not just through supporting them on our platform, but through direct investment through our venture arm called Clio Ventures, where we've invested in Proof, Steno, and EvenUp over the course of the last year and a half. We also relaunched our launch code program earlier this year with a new vision of what it could be, and we called it the Integration Awards. The Integration Awards are an effort for us to highlight three best-in-class apps on the app ecosystem. The categories were Best New App, Best Practice of Law App, and Best Business of Law App. And I'm excited to share the winners in each of these categories with you. We announced these winners a couple of weeks ago, and you have a chance to interact and connect with each of these winners down on the exhibit floor. The winner of Best New App was ModaWord. ModaWord is an incredible translation service that delivers high quality and cost-effective documents in multiple languages. The Best Practice of Law app was Fidu. Fidu helps firms transition from the traditional hourly model billing structure to a subscription-based model. And last but not least, Hona won the Best Business of Law app. Hona is a client communications hub that delivers automatic updates to clients anytime something changes in their case, 
keep, keeping them informed, and delivering peace of mind. So please be sure to check them out in the exhibit hall and please give a big round of applause to all of our winners for the inaugural Integration Awards. We're also excited to launch a benefits portal that you can access through the law community. What this benefits portal does is brings a huge array of discounts and offers our integration partners are willing to offer to you through our exclusive law community. This law community is available to everyone that is a Clio customer. So please check out the law community and the new benefits portal to understand some of these incredible benefits. Last but not least, we're also excited to launch the Clio Academy. What's exciting about the Clio Academy is you might feel at the end of this keynote a little bit overwhelmed by the number of things you need to synthesize and understand and put to work in your law firm. What we're doing is deploying a set of courses that are oriented around a few central themes. One is getting paid and the other is getting organized. These tools will help you amplify your impact and help you understand how you can put Clio to work for you. So we're real excited to, check, to launch the Clio Academy uh, and please be sure to check it out. So, we've covered a lot of ground today, but let, you let me tell you, there's so much more to learn and discover over the next two days at ClioCon. And you'll come away from these two days with an incredible set of tools for you to amplify your impact in the legal industry. Again, I encourage you to check out the Clio Product Lab and the Clio Success Center to better engage with our teams, both on the product side and the customer success side to learn how you can put Clio, con to, Clio to work. Now, the last thing I'll do in this opening keynote is set the stage for next year. We're gonna be moving to a new city next year, and does anyone have a guess of where that's gonna be? Let's hear it. Vancouver, Austin, Vegas, Pittsburgh, who votes for Pittsburgh? All right, it's not Pittsburgh. We are going to Austin, Texas next year. We will be moving with momentum as we take CleoCon to Austin, Texas, and we're so excited to bring it to a city that has such a vibrant culture, amazing cuisine, breathtaking scenery. We're excited to see you at Austin next year. Thank you, everyone. This has been incredible. Have an amazing time at Clio. We'll see you later today.